Welcome to the lesson on 2015 BLS guideline changes. In this video, we'll discuss the recent BLS guideline changes that were made in 2015 by the American Heart Association or AHA, which updates its guidelines every five years on cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR and emergency cardiovascular care or ECC. In 2015, the AHA update on its ECC guidelines strengthened some of the recommendations made in 2010. Here's a summary of the changes made to the 2015 BLS guidelines. The 2010 sequence change from Airway Breathing Compressions, or ABC, to Compressions Airway Breathing, or CAB, remains in the 2015 update. The early initiation of chest compressions resulted in improved outcomes. Previously, as a rescuer or a provider, you may have been faced with the choice of leaving the individual to activate EMS. Nowadays, you're more likely to have a cell phone, often with speakerphone capabilities. The 2015 BLS guidelines encourage you to use a speakerphone or other hands-free device, allowing yourself to continue rendering aid while communicating with the EMS dispatcher. The 2015 update also suggests that if you're an untrained rescuer or provider, you should initiate hands-only CPR under the direction of the EMS dispatcher as soon as the individual is identified as unresponsive. Meanwhile, if you're a trained rescuer or provider, you should continue to provide CPR with rescue breaths. In situations where unresponsiveness is thought to be from a narcotic overdose, as a trained BLS rescuer, you may administer naloxone via the intranasal or intramuscular route if the drug is available. For individuals without a pulse, administer the drug after CPR is initiated. In cardiac arrest, use the defibrillator as soon as possible and resume chest compressions as soon as a shock is delivered. Biphasic defibrillators are more effective in terminating life-threatening rhythms and are preferred to older monophasic defibrillators. Energy settings of defibrillators vary by manufacturer, so you should follow the device-specific guidelines. For cardiac arrest that is suspected to be caused by coronary artery blockage, perform angiography emergently. Standard dose of epinephrine, that is one milligram every three to five minutes, is the preferred vasopressor. High dose epinephrine and vasopressin have not been shown to be more effective and therefore are not recommended. Maintain constant target temperature between 32 to 36 degrees Celsius for at least 24 hours in the hospital environment. Routine cooling of individuals in the pre-hospital environment is not recommended. The 2015 guidelines also emphasize on the importance of high quality chest compressions with enhanced recommendations for maximum rates and depths. To perform high quality chest compressions, keep the following in mind. Chest compressions should be 100 to 120 per minute because compressions faster than 120 per minute may not allow for cardiac refill and reduce perfusion. Additionally, you should deliver compressions to adults at a depth between two to 2.4 inches, that is five to six centimeters, because compressions at greater depths may result in injury to vital organs without increasing odds of survival. For children, that is less than one year old, deliver at a depth between 1.5 to 3 inches, that is 4 to 5 centimeters. Be sure to allow for full chest recoil between compressions to promote cardiac filling. Because it's difficult to accurately judge quality of chest compressions, an audiovisual feedback device may be used to optimize delivery of CPR during resuscitation. Interruptions of chest compressions, including pre- and post-AED shocks, should be as short as possible. Compression to ventilation ratio remains 30 to 2 for individuals without an advanced airway in place. For individuals with an advanced airway in place, you should provide uninterrupted chest compressions with ventilations at a rate of 1 every 6 seconds. For further details or an in-depth review of 2015's guideline changes, please refer to the AHA's executive summary document. This concludes our lesson on 2015 BLS guideline changes. Next, we'll review 2010 BLS guideline changes.